Welcome back to Nerf Game Theory. I am Captain Xavier, and today I'm going to talk about shields! Shields are another one of those contentious topics in our hobby where some people think they're wonderful and great, and some groups allow them and embrace them and have a lot of fun with them, and other people think that they, they, they're against the spirit of our game or they just don't like them for whatever reasons, and some clubs just don't allow them. And there is no right or wrong answer on that. There is no right or wrong stance. There are no unifying standards within our hobby for shields, just like there isn't for melee weapons, and that's... There are reasons for that. Our hobby is so widely varied, it's very hard to have any kind of a, an actual unifying standard. Uh, so if you're considering allowing shields, that's what this video is going to help with. I'm not going to try to tell you whether you should or shouldn't. Um, I'm going to give you the things that you should think about to determine whether you should or shouldn't. And the first is, of course, going to be safety. As with melee, as with ammo types, as with everything, safety needs to be your first concern. The puma is having entirely too much fun in my attic. Um, but safety, the same things that we had for melee, the construction is one thing you need to think about. How are they made? Uh, are there any risk of this design hurting somebody or, or catastrophically breaking and, and causing a problem? Um, and then, of course, there is the use. Um, shields can you know, you wouldn't think of shields as being dangerous, but I have, in fact, caused a minor injury at a Nerf War where I charged someone with my tower shield, fully expecting them to retreat, and they didn't. They held their ground like a boss. And I ended up running into them um, and clipping them on, I think, the chin with the edge of my shield. And luckily, my shield was a, you know, a, a, a snow sled. And so the edge was, you know, relatively softer plastic and curled. But it still, you know, it wasn't pleasant for them. And it was absolutely my fault. Um, and I'm someone who has years of experience using a shield. But I'm used to them having a helmet and, and retreating when you charge them. But it was, I was the one, the aggressor in the situation, so it was entirely my fault. And if they had gone to a marshal and said, hey, he ran into me, that's not cool, he shouldn't be allowed to have a shield, I wouldn't have argued. I mean, I was completely in the wrong, and I still feel bad about it. And I'm a lot more careful with my shields as a result. So it is possible for people to use shields unsafely, and so be aware of that. If people are constantly running into people or smashing people with their shields or throwing them or whatever you know, you might not want to allow them. And construction is also a concern. It is poss very easy to make a shield that's not safe, pointed corners, thin edges, all sorts of things that wouldn't be good if someone were to run into it or trip. And, you know, we, we, we base our safety on worst case scenarios, or at least likely um, bad scenarios. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at the rules for construction. Because that's the next thing you're going to need to consider, are the rules. What is the rule set for your shields? And that includes things like construction, as, and use, and the cat is having way too much fun. <laughs> um, but construction and use, uh, as well as how do they work mechanically. So construction, you're, again, you're going to be looking at what kind of materials most of mine I make out of sleds. They're cheap, they're durable, um, they're, they're designed to be relatively safe, there are no sharp edges, all of that. I then bolt a handle onto it on the inside. Um, and it works. Other, you might decide you're only going to allow official Nerf type shields. Uh, we allow you know, obviously the strong arm shields, we also allow, like, the Lego shields are another popular one because they're lightweight, you find them at goodwill, they're, they're safe, they're, you know, for whatever reason. But there are lots of other materials that you could use. You could also in enforce full LARP standards, or it has to be a full um, bit of foam so that you could actually bash someone with it and it wouldn't hurt. Um, it's, it's what, what do you think is safe? What is, what is your, 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 uh, standard for safety and and talk to your players. What do they what do they think is safe enough? What do they think isn't safe? Uh, do they want shields? Do they not want shields? All of that um, Once you've got all that ironed out, then you need to look at how do they actually function? What do they actually do? Um, in our game We have two categories of shields. We have small shields which are things like any official nerf brand shield and like the Lego shields are and similar size and then we've got larger shields, things like this, or, or my tower shield, or, you know, anything that's... We never actually had a set size of this is the exact dimensions because the shields were so varied. It was just kind of a marshal's call of, yeah, that's small enough to be a small shield. Mm, that one's probably up into a large shield. Um, what they did was the same for both of them, but the difference was what you were allowed to use. So if you're using a small shield, you were allowed to use anything you wanted, any blaster, any melee weapon, whatever, you could use anything you wanted and it was fair game. Um, if you were using one of the larger shields, we had more restrictions. You could still use melee weapons, but you could only use lower capacity non-magazine fed blasters. 
Uh, most commonly were things like hammer shots, hammer prime blasters, but we did also allow things like the barricade and the Ultra 2 because they're relatively low capacity and cumbersome to reload. And the reason that we did that is that um, a big enough shield in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing can be very game-breaking. It can be very OP if the other team doesn't have any way to counter it, and especially OP if the person using it knows how to actually organize their team and to really run it properly. Um, this is why we ended up introducing the different ammo types. We had people that started using more and more shields, and there wasn't any good counter, and it was it was kind of it was it was imbalancing the game. And so we introduced the different ammo types, which I talked about two videos ago. Um, so that we had light, medium, and heavy ammo. Light ammo is are things like rival, uh, regular darts, half darts, vortex, ultra, hyper, all of those. Your standard small ammo types. And they are completely stopped by shields. They just bounce off and they do absolutely nothing. Um, Mega then pierces the shield. So it, if, it hits you, if Mega hits your shield, it counts as attack. And you just go respawn. But you, you still get your shield. And anything bigger, rockets, not only does it count as a tag, it destroys the shield for the rest of the round. Now that worked in our games because we played lots of really short rounds. So if your shield got blown up halfway through a round, you were only out your shield for two and a half minutes of the whole game. And then the next round started and you could have your shield back. Now if you were playing longer rounds, half hour or hour long rounds, or you know one three hour round, that mechanic might not work so well because having your equipment destroyed and you never get it back or you don't get it back for, for a long time isn't nearly as much fun. Now you could say you can't use it for the next respawn or the next two respawns or for the next five minutes or or what have you. You could you could find ways to to work it out so it isn't as as bad of a penalty to have your shield destroyed or, or your blaster destroyed because we allow blaster destruction as well. Um, but figuring out exactly what mechanics you want is going to be up to you. I've heard of people who had it so that shields just took a certain number of hits and then you were tagged. So five hits to a shield counted as a tag and it didn't matter what you were firing then you went and you respawned. And that's a perfectly good mechanic if you if you can keep track. That's kind of the hard part is how do you keep track of how many times the shield has been hit you know, if, if your group is handling it and it's working well for you and it's just sort of a, yeah, that was probably five hits and I'm good, then that works. If you've got people that keep abusing it and are always claiming that, oh, that was the fourth hit, I'm still good, seven hits later, mm, you know, that's that's more of a, a, a player thing and a culture thing and an honesty thing and, a, you know, you might have to have a chat with them. But how you choose to actually implement shields and, and, and whether how you use them in game balance, because that's another thing, is where do shields fall in uh, loadouts as far as is it really powerful? Is it not very powerful? You know, that's, that's a tough one to say. And again, that can come down to who's using it. Me with a shield and, a, and one of my uh, nine round Ultra 2s is going to be a lot more effective than a little kid with a Lego shield and a pool noodle. Um, you know, so to keep that in mind when you're doing your game balance, it's also important that if, if you do have a, a mechanic for destroying shields or piercing shields, that they're, it's available. You don't want to make it something that people can't afford, like making it only Titan rockets can take out shields. Well, most people don't have Titan rockets, and if they do, you're never going to hit anything with them. Um, where, whereas if you make it, you know, Mega XL, that's now readily available, relatively avail you know, cheap, relatively speaking. Um, it's never a good idea to have cost be a balancing um, element in your games, because not everyone has the same resources, and that can mean they can't have as much fun as everybody else. You might implement a rule where if you want to bring a shield, you have to bring a counter. Whether it's just, you have to bring a Mega Blaster and a Mega Dart. You can take the field with the shield and you give the blaster to the other team so they have at least something that they can counter it with. That would be perfectly legitimate as well. You also might make it so the shield always switches sides. Or you can only have shields in some rounds. Or, or, or what have you. Um, there's lots of ways to maintain the game balance. But again... That might not be your goal. You might be trying to encourage people to start using more interesting loadouts, more variety, different ammo types and all of that, and introducing shields and having them be subject to destruction by higher ammo types is going to encourage people to do that, because otherwise, yeah, shields can be very, very game-breaking. Um, I think that pretty much covers my thoughts on shields. I really like them, but I also intentionally limit my use of them because I know how good I am with them and how broken they can be. So keep that in mind. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of shields, whether you allow them, what mechanics you have for them, construction rules, safety rules, all of that. Love to hear it all, and thank you for watching.